So, I'm going to show you the history of when we ruled Europe, in brief, in a nutshell. I'm going to show you our rulership in Spain, and I'm going to show you how we got here. Pay close attention. Early Spanish manuscript illumination. I want you to see on the cover, this is in Spain now. You got black angels, black Christ, black cherubims. Let's go inside. Now, here is the cover of the book. Okay, angels, black angels, black Christ in the center, black cherubim on either side. Then you have more black angels with seraphim. But let's take a look at the wording here. Plate 8A to plate 8B. Christ, whose darkened flesh tones now give him an almost negroid cast. You see how white people are? Almost negroid cast. Let's take a look at that again. Do y'all see that? Do you see how black he is and the angels? Look at these angels. Christ in the center. Look at his hands. Look at their hands. Look at the faces. Look at the feet. Christ, whose darkened flesh tones now give him an almost Negroid cast, is shown and thrown between two cherubs within a great circular firmament uh, suspended from the hands of two seraphs. All right, let's go to another one. All right, this is plate 15. Let me see if they got some words for plate 15. 17, let me see. All right, plate 15. The woman clothed with the sun, the woman clothed in the sun and the dragon. This is based on Revelation 12. And the great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed in the sun and the moon was under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Letting you know that this woman represented the 12 tribes of Israel. Let's take a look at how they painted them. Look. Look at the woman. Black. Look at the angels. Black. Hey. Look at the Lord. Look at the Lord Black sitting on the throne. And there's a dragon with seven heads. Great red dragon. Black. Now, you should know that the ones who painted this were not Moors, or I will say it this way, were not Muslims. I'll word it like that because the word more simply means black. So they were black. But who painted this? These were the Jews, okay? The Israelites who followed the New Testament. But what happened to them? What happened to these black people that painted these black images of the Lord and the angels? Now, I've told you many times before, when you look up this word renaissance, it means rebirth. But the question should be asked, rebirth of what? Rebirth of the white man in power in the earth. When you go to the book of Malachi, come along, follow along, follow along. Malachi. Now, what I'm showing you, your ministers ain't going to show you. It's either they've been told not to share it with you or they just don't know it. Ah. Uh, Malachi chapter 1. Ah, come on now. <laughs> Here we go. Malachi chapter 1 and verse uh, 1. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? This is what we're asking God. And God's response to us is, was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I love Jacob. So we were questioning the Lord, okay? We were saying, it don't look like you love us, Lord. What, during this time, we were just coming out of the Persian captivity. And the Most High was reassuring us that he loved us. 
Now he's telling Malachi to give us a prophecy. Watch this. It's going to be in verse 4 is the prophecy, but verse 3, let's continue on. So the bottom of verse 2, yet I love Jacob, verse 3, and I hated Esau. Remember who Esau is? The so-called white man, the entire Caucasian race. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. When was this? This is during the Middle Ages or what's termed the Dark Ages, when we had ran them out into the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. Okay, now watch this, verse 4. Whereas Edom saith, now notice it went from calling him Esau or calling them Esau to Edom. When you read Genesis 25, 25 down to 31, it tells you that Esau's name was also called Edom, E-D-O-M, which means red, red people, because the blood shows through their skin. So verse four again, whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, that's during the dark ages, but we will return and build the desolate places. When did they return? From the time of the Renaissance era. And I've told you many, many times they took us down systematically from Rome, Italy, Spain, Portugal, um, France, Germany, uh, England, and the, the last place was Russia. But that was the last place they conquered us because we were ruling those, all those places. And I've showed you that many, many times. So let's read it again, verse four. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. So this time God said he's going to destroy them. And they shall call them, call Edom, Esau, Edom, the border of wickedness. And the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. For how long? Forever. You can't change the Bible. You can't change the Bible. I don't care how you feel in your heart. But there's some nice, it doesn't make a difference. You meet nice people all the time. It doesn't change the word of God. It doesn't. And I don't know what's wrong with some of you Negroes. So, <laughs> so now, what was I getting to? What was I getting to? So now, they took us down. We were in Spain. We were in Portugal. We were in uh, Spain, Portugal. I'll start there, Spain and Portugal. Uh, what happened? They introduced, listen to what I'm about to say, what the white man did. We Remember, we're the Jews. We ruled Spain, Portugal. We ruled Europe during the dark. Now, I'm not saying we was righteous and holy. Mm -mm -mm. We was doing some, uh, some bad things. We weren't right. But anyway, here's my point. That's not, here's my point. Because anyway, my point is, in today's lesson, is that the white man, he introduced a new form of Christianity. Now, I know a lot of you jump back to Constantine. Constantine, he set up in this, he had the dream, in this symbol, conquer, whatever. I'm going to the Renaissance. They introduced another form of Christianity. Now, some may call it, some books call it Roman Catholicism, where the Pope is the representative of God on earth. He, they call him the vicar or the replacement of God, replace, replacement of Christ. Um... They forced us to convert to Christianity, this new form of Christianity, wherein they were God, they were Christ, okay? The angels were white, and that the Jews who had converted, the white men who had converted to being a Jew, they also had to, um, they were on top of us. This white man that we had used from the Caucasus Mountains to help us in our military, they also turned against us. Never trust your enemies, brothers and sisters. They, we were under the, we said, these are our allies. And those very same allies turned against us. So again, this was about white supremacy. This was about hatred, okay? That's what we read about Leviticus 26, 17. You can't change that. So again, they introduced a new form of Christianity wherein Christ was no longer black. Like all, when I show you the images of, of Christ, God and the angels, always black during the dark ages, always black. Now they introduced a Renaissance Jesus and forced us to submit. Those who did not submit were either murdered, castrated, enslaved, or banished. Banished where? From Spain, they banished us to Portugal. We had to pay like, I believe it was, I'm a, I got it in the book, I'm going to read it. 
like eight talents or 10 talents of silver or gold to remain in Portugal for like six months. And after that, they banished us to St. Thomas on the west coast of Africa, Angola, Guinea. Uh, what else did they do? And they separated us from our children. I'm going to show you that too. Image of the black in Western art. All right, I'm on page 70, and we're going to discuss a few, three images. I'm going to start at image number 46, which is this one here, 46. There's going to be 47, and on the next page is 48. So I'm going to start with their commentary on painting number 46, and I think I should start here. Okay. It reads... In fact, the images in the manuscript treating of the Antichrist composed in Bavaria around 1440 to 1450 carried a powerful charge of dangerous ideas. Totally unrealistic, but new. So what was the unrealistic but new idea that was so dangerous? First, we see two envoys of the Antichrist. Wow. By their preaching, one is leading the white king of Libya astray, the other, the king of Ethiopia, and his fighting men. So let's see the Antichrist leading men astray. Let's see. Now, that was 46. Remember, here's 46. I'm going to go up. Okay. Leading the white king of Libya astray and his men. Let's go down. Leading the Antichrist, leading the king of Ethiopia and his men astray. So this was a dangerous idea showing the white man leading black people and others astray with Roman Catholicism. That's what's going into Christianity, this new form of Christianity. So that was 46. Okay, let's go back. All right. This second image is sort of negative of the scenes in John of Opava's Evangelist Theory, painted less than a century earlier in Bohemia. The resemblance is striking. We should point out that the two scenes do not appear in the older versions of the play of the Antichrist that we have been able to consult. A little further on in the manuscript, monstrous white men and blacks carrying curved sabers and an emblazoned shield march toward the Antichrist, and kings from all over the world worship him. Now, where is this? Plate 48. All right, this is 47. Uh, let's see. Oh, here it is, plate 48. Now, we just read monstrous white men. Here it says fabulous figures and black men marching toward the Antichrist. Adoration of the Antichrist, Antichrist. Bavaria, 1440 to 1450. Look, monstrous white men leading black men toward the Antichrist. Monstrous white men leading black men toward the Antichrist. I didn't make this up. Notice the white men are riding on a goat. And there's three of them. Hmm. Let's go back. So that was 48, uh, toward the Antichrist. And kings from all over the world worship him. Clearly what we have here is a negative counter type of the adoration of the Magi. Among the three crowned kings, the black comes last. Okay, here's the next one. Among the three crowned kings, the black comes last and his banner, held by a black soldier, bears the caricature of a black in profile. At the next photo, now note, I want you to notice the wording. Notice, it says, among the three crowned kings, the black comes last, and his banner, held by a black soldier, bears the caricature of a black in profile. Now, let's take a look at this. Okay, this is still dealing with uh, this picture here. Notice, it says, the black comes last, and the soldier's carrying the banner of a black in caricature. Now, I want you to see here, you have a white holding a white man. How come they didn't call this a caricature? 
I'm showing you how, who, who put this book together? But the point is, main point is that this is the Antichrist and the whole world's worshiping the white man as Christ. That's the point. But I want to go, I want to show you something edited by David Byman, Henry Louis Gates Jr. David Byman is a racist. This is a racist white man if you look him up. Henry Louis Gates Jr. is black, but he's a subordinate. And he lets white supremacists make foolish and evil statements regarding black people. Okay. Now this is when the this book goes into the history of when the whites began to conquer us and take us down systematically. Rome, they took us down. Uh, Spain, Portugal sent some of us to the west coast of Africa as slaves, enslaved others of us in Portugal and Spain, and they started to mislead us into this new religion of Christianity. That's what that's what these uh, painters are really saying. They were leading us to the Antichrist. All right. Here's a book, History of the Jews by Professor H. Greats. Okay. I'm going to page 339. We're going to read the underlined section. All right. Mm. I'll start here. Two brothers, Ibn Yakya Negro. I want you to see his last name, Negro, meaning black, also frequented the court of Lisbon. They were sons of a certain Don David who had recommended them not to invest their rich inheritance in real estate for he saw that banishment was in store for the Portuguese Jews. So now we had already got, came from Spain. We left from Spain because they were forcing us to worship Antichrist, this white image of Christ. We went to Portugal and they allowed us to stay there only for a limited time. Let's go down. When Alfonso conquered the port of Arzilla in Africa, this is Morocco, Morocco, the victors brought with them among many thousand captive Moors, who were made captives, they brought them back. 250 Jews, they brought them back as well, who were sold as slaves throughout the kingdom. I want you to see that. When Alfonso conquered the port of Arzillo in Africa, the victors brought with them among many thousand captive Moors, 250 Jews, who were sold as slaves throughout the kingdom. That Jews and Jewesses, men and women, should be doomed to the misery of slavery was unendurable to Abrabanel's heart. Now he took up money, he paid for their, for, their, for their freedom and all that, but money eventually runs out. Okay, let's go to the next section. All right, we're on page 371. All right. Uh, let's start it. He maintained that more Jews had come into Portugal. Remember, we fled from Spain because of that new Christianity where the white man was set up as God in Christ, okay? And that Christ just died for all nations on the planet Earth. That garbage. He maintained that more Jews had come into Portugal. This is where we fled than had been stipulated for and insisted, therefore, that the agreement be strictly carried out. Those who remained after the expiration of eight months, that he only allowed us to stay in Portugal for eight months, were made slaves. If, if you stayed long, if the Jews stayed longer than that, the black Jews were made what? Slaves and sold or given to those of the Portuguese nobility, meaning the white man, who cared to take their pick from them. What year was this? 1493. Why do I want to stress this right here? 1493. When, this, when did the slavery start that the white man said on TBN? The 1500s. 1501. That's like what? Almost seven, eight years difference. King Zhao went still further in his cruel dealings with the unhappy Spanish Jews. Remember, I just showed you in a book about the Spanish Jews. What color were they? Black. 
Don't forget, don't fall off the horse. Keep up with the conversation, please. <laughs> the children from three to 10 years of age whose parents had become slaves, why? Because those Jews rejected this new form of Christianity. He ordered to be transported by sea to the newly discovered San, San Thomas or Lost Isle with San Thomas on the west coast of Africa. Ilhas Perdidas, Island of Perdition, there to be read in the tenets of Christianity. They were still forcing this new form of Christianity on us. The weeping of the mothers, the sobbing of the children, the rage of the fathers who tore their hair in agony did not move the heartless despot to recall his command. Mothers entreated to be allowed to go with their children Mothers entreated to be allowed to go with their children, threw themselves at the king's feet as he came out of, out of church to so Sunday and implored him to leave them at least the youngest. Danjal had them dragged from his path like bitches who had their whelps torn from them. Wow, you can't make this up. The islands of San Thomas, that's in Africa, the West Coast. Let's get down. Most of the children perished on the journey or became the prey of wild beasts. Among the survivors, it happened that brothers and sisters, in ignorance, in ignorance of their relationship, married each other. We were at a base state. Remember, we was children, little kids. Perhaps the king's barbarity to the Jews must be accounted for by the bitter gloom which mastered him at the death of his only legitimate son. You can't make this stuff up. All right, I'm on page 115, Babylon of Timbuktu, the expulsion of the Jews from Spain and Portugal. Now, I, start, I wanted to reference the European books first before I went to um, Rudolf or Winslow because some of you idiots don't consider Rudolf or Winslow a scholar because he's black. So that's why I prefaced this book with the with greats, the white man, all right? It was A.D. 1492, January 2nd, when the Moorish stronghold of Granada surrendered to the armies of King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella. These are the King and Queen Ferdinand and Queen Isabella conquered Spain, okay? For the first time since the year 711, all of Spain was in Christian hands. Remember, the Christian hands is talking about this new form of Christianity that we have today. The decree to expel the Jews from Spain was signed on March 31st in one of the corridors of the great Alhambra, the palace of the Moorish kings of Granada. The reason given for the expulsion of the Jews was that it was thought they corrupted the Moranos, Jews converted to Christianity. Now let's pause there for a second. So remember, the Moors, amongst the Moors, you had Jews, black Jews. When they were either forced to convert to Christianity, some did it willingly, but in pretense. Okay, that's what it says, Jews converted to, to Christianity, but privately encouraging them in disloyalty to, to Christianity. So some Jews were only faking to be Christians just so that they could stay in Spain. The ultimatum, given to the Jews expired August 1st, 1492. But the last group of Jews did not leave until August 2nd, 1492. Let's start here. This date is a strange coincidence that the day was the 9th of Ab, that means August, that's the Jewish month for August. The fast day, which is reminiscent of the destruction of the first and second temples. All right, I'm gonna jump down. In order to satisfy Queen Isabella of Spain, King Manuel of Portugal promulgated a royal decree expelling the Jews and Moors from his country in 1496. Now, this is four years before um, the slavery over transatlantic slave trade. The Jews who were... Expelled from Spain and Portugal were scattered throughout the Mediterranean coast. It is estimated that over 100,000 Jews departed from Spain and Portugal 
during the persecutions, that's the Inquisition, and the expulsion, that's the Inquisition. Some of these Jews went to Northern Europe, Italy, and Turkey, but most of them went to, the Muslim, went to Muslim countries of Northern and Western Africa. These black Jews would naturally go to African countries, most of all, because of less persecution and they could disguise themselves easily among blacks. All right, I'm going to start here. When the Jews were expelled from Spain, about 100,000 entered Portugal. They were permitted to enter under the condition that they pay the poll tax. And we read that in another book. With the understanding that they would leave the country within eight months. Also at this time, the king obligated himself to take the Jews wherever they desired at the termination of the eight months. So after eight months, you, the king would take you wherever he wanted to go. When the time expired, many Jews were stranded because the king did not provide enough ships in time. All the black Jews who were left behind were deprived of their freedom and sold into slavery. During the reign of King Zhao, King John II, 700 black Hebrew children were ruthlessly taken away from their parents in Portugal and transported to the island of San Tome, that's St. Thomas, off the west coast of Africa. This island is located near Nigeria, Cameroon, and Gabon. Wow. All right. So I hope y'all keeping up with the conversation. So remember, uh, Matt Crouch did say to T.D. Jakes, he said, I know slavery was the 1500s, 1600s. He said, I know a lot about it. Tell us about it. And what white people like to do is test your level of intelligence, okay? So what was going on during this time of Inquisition? Many of us were being banished from Spain to Portugal, from Portugal to the west coast of Africa. Our children were separated from us. This time, and remember I showed you the date of 1493, seven to eight years later began the, the, the transportation of our people from the west coast of Africa to the uh, shores of the United States. It wasn't the United States, it wasn't called that at this time. But remember, you had Columbus who had made his expedition on the other side of the world, followed by Amerigo Vespucci, Hernan Cortez, and others. Okay, it's, this is all happening at the same time. The Inquisition, our banishment and enslavement, the separating of our children was all happening the same time as Columbus was making his expedition to this side of the world, wherein you had the Spanish conquistadors conquering the other tribes of Israel in South America, Central America, the Indians throughout the Caribbean islands, so forth and so on. I hope you are seeing a clear picture now. Let's look at some of the first slaves that came to this side of the world. Before the Mayflower, A History of Black America by Lerone Bennett Jr. Let's go inside the book. All right. I'm on page 36. And what do I want? Mm, I'm going to start here. Many, perhaps most, of the first generation of African Americans entered America with Spanish names for reasons that are not readily apparent. Wow. Many black males were called Antonio, a name that quickly became Anthony or Anthony. Other popular names of the period included Michaela, Cuchicello, Mingo, Pedro, Francisco, Jabina, Maria, Wotelo, Tomorrow, Angola, and Tony Congo. Shortly after their arrival in America, many blacks discarded African and Spanish names and adopted English titles. So notice these first slaves that came to America had Spanish names for reasons that are not readily apparent, meaning they've been hiding the history that we ruled Spain for a long time, that we were the Jews that ruled Spain. They've been hiding that. Not just Spain, we ruled all Europe for a thousand years. Wow. 